Welcome back to the Artie Lang Show. Sitting here with great comic, Mike Gaffney. He will be at the Borgata. Is that this weekend? This sun, the Monday till Sunday. This Sunday, Monday till Sunday. Yeah. Now, do you still have the disease of gambling or no? Oh, absolutely. You do? Oh. Yeah. I was in the throes of it. I just told the story. Oh, <laughs> seven. Uh, I, I, in the, when I was on the great Howard Stern show, so I made extraordinary money. I did uh, uh, two shows, one Friday, one Saturday at Mandalay Bay. I did an appearance at their stupid club. I sit there like an idiot. Uh, free whore, though. And... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I made a hundred grand for the weekend, lost a hundred and eight thousand. I gave my uh, my uh, stand up agent ten thousand, so I lost eighteen thousand on a weekend. I was supposed to make nine eighty thousand, and uh, mostly on uh, craps, the tables, a couple of bets. I lost on the game, uh, Super Bowl, you know, under over field goals, coin toss. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> I get on the plane with 42 Percocet at the time. I was taking about 30 a day, so I, there were liver issues. And the movie on the plane was Gattaca with Jude Law. Mm. Welcome to my hell. <laughs> hey, Mike, good to see you. It's all relative, right? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that right? Do you have it's, nightmare stories? It's all story? relative. Let's, you have let's... nightmare stories like that? Yeah, a um, little different. I have uh, two kids that would like to see a paycheck at the end of the week. <laughs> And <laughs> see, you already made mine worse. <laughs> see, I've never been responsible for other people. A couple of broad you're dating, but they're adults. Who cares? Right. But if you have kids that you're responsible for. Yeah. Here's the thing. When you tell your kids that you have, like, shirts and shit from them that you bought from. You can't. I'm sorry. From, from, from Vegas, but yeah. you don't. You didn't buy anything. <laughs> <laughs> so when I come home with nothing. <laughs> And the story is, I left it at the airport. <laughs> uh, the, I left it at a bookie's house. I, <laughs> I left it at the sports book at the Mirage. I said I left it at the airport. I, I had a big. You yeah. should have known that the things I told them I bought them at Vegas. When you know, oh, they would have loved everything. There were so many good things. When it's your actual kids that you care about, and it's not like the illegitimate chubby half Filipino kid uh, you had in Vegas, who you know it's easy to forget. Uh, you you had your real children. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and and yeah. so that's the only thing that makes me not hit the tables is. Thinking that, like, my daughter's 16 now. She's not Your having kids. the story. Right, exactly. She's, a 16 year old girl, she's not gonna do it. There's no yeah. way she's getting the. So, <laughs> what happened again? You left my shirt at the airport. It's not happening. So, I have to <laughs> follow through and bring a check home. Oh, like, I've had nightmares about how, like, uh, after a weekend like that, if I had a daughter, like, you know, her 16. Sweet 16 that I miss or whatever. And she goes, having your last name is like cancer. <laughs> <laughs> and then I wake up. <laughs> uh, see, I didn't wake up. That's the difference. <laughs> well, wake up. You're, uh, well, you the, have two kids. You're a single dad, Single right? father. I raised them by myself. How'd that happen? Wow. Uh, their mom was popping pills and decided uh, that, you know what, you just take them. Really? Mm, about nine years ago. Well, you were a good man. Wow. Yeah. You were a good man. You So you're doing what you should be doing. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted them anyhow. I got them every weekend anyhow. And then yeah. I was just like, let me just keep them. I mean, you're is a she, disaster. Is she doing any better? Well, she's a lot better. She's with a guy. They have a baby. Like, they have a kid. They have oh. like, their own home and stuff. But they just... you, I hope you explain to the kids in a healthy way that mommy cares more about her new baby than <laughs> it's how yeah, they don't really need me to explain that. <laughs> Mommy cares more about her new baby. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but you know, so where are you from? Jersey. I grew up in Jersey City. Oh, you did? Yeah. Now, I, Irish kid from Jersey City. Yeah, Beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, uh, did you go? What high school did you go to? Dickinson High School. Wow. Yeah. And what, how old are you? Forty-four. Yeah. So I mean, did, did you always want to be a comic? Not I mean, even know about Jersey City is a tough, a tough town to get out of. Yeah, you got, we moved when I was 20, which is kind of like is what sucks because if I was like 17, I could have still been in high school into a new county. Exactly. But I moved when I was 20, so my whole crew still you was... You went through it. Yeah. I had to go back home. Right, I couldn't right. stay. Who am I meeting at 20? What do you mean? You don't meet friends at 20. <laughs> exactly. So I have to go back home and stay in that gutter. In Did you go to college? No. Yeah, me neither. I, no. Yeah, my town wasn't a picnic to get out of either. Yeah, where were you from? I'm from Union. Right, yeah. yeah right right next to Elizabeth. It's like, yeah, it's, it's not easy... It's not easy to get out of there, you know, and the kids, a lot of kids stay, and, you know, not a lot of kids go to college. I, I didn't go, and uh, I, I wouldn't have the money anyway or the grades, but uh, two key things. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, yeah. or, or an amazing football talent like you, or an amazing brain like you. Uh, but so you did the next thing. So when did you start doing stand-up? After about, I got clean 
and I'm in recovery. I, I got clean in 93. Good for you, man. Wow, that's impressive. And then about, See, you're like a superhero to me. You got 20 it, years. Yeah, 20, uh, I'll have 21 this month, February right, 25th. God bless you, man. Yeah. That's great. That's fair. What were you doing, if you don't mind me? What was your I DOC tell you, I drug of choice? I was a crackhead. Wow. Yeah, I was right out of the box. I, like, I don't understand. Like, I, I mean, not like your lifestyle, but you got to... You got to experience a little life and mess it up. Right. You know what I'm saying? I just came out of the gate messed up. Like yeah. I never had a chance to establish. I, I was I, I was to never crack. I think I never free base blow. I never smoked coke. I did a bunch of it through my nose, and that created a lot of hysteria in my life early, the mm-hmm. way I got arrested. And that's the first time I tried to get clean was because of blow. And I when I was 27, it's the first time I walked into an AA meeting. Right. And it you know, then when the last time I did coke. Was June fourteenth, nineteen ninety seven. A lot of people can't believe I did that, but that's I how got powerful that. is he? he? Remembers the last day he did coke. Oh yeah, I remember from going into the rooms that's, and you say, yeah, you know, yeah. the date. And uh, I was clean for a while. Then I started casual drinking. Thought I had that under control. And then on the road, too hectic on the road. One day I, I tried heroin, man, and that was it. I chased it for five years. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Did you ever do opiates like stuff like that? No, I liked up. Yeah. I like being up. Yeah, that's I know. That's a the. You know, Coke's a more social drug. You'd think. And I, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that's how they sell it on the package. But well, you're a strong guy then. I mean, you're, you're that's strong. I, mean, I don't know. For I 21 mean, years, man. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I just didn't want, I, after a while, I'm like, I, don't, I just wanted to go out like normal people. Like, I know. That's what you see. You see normal people going, be, how are you living? I just like, want to go get a living? beer like right. on a Saturday. <laughs> that's all I wanted to do. Like, I figured if I could just stop smoking crack for a couple of days, I'll <laughs> drink a beer on a Saturday. That was the goal. And you say, God, give me the strength to stop smoking crack. Just a day. And then, like, I remember I had, like, 90 days. I told my mother, I'm like, listen, when I get three years, I'm going to start smoking angel dust again. <laughs> 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 oh, good. That's that, that mama. We'll have a little celebration then. She's like, all right. And when you're three years. I'm like, yeah. Did I'm you tra- smoke dust? Yeah. How, so you were doing dust and crack. Dust when I was younger, like in my teens, and then crack when I like hit 20 to so 20, almost we're 24. We're about the same age. You had yeah. dust in the mid-80s. I had a couple of buddies who were exclusive to dust. They couldn't do yeah, anything no. else. Yeah, this... My one buddy had a, a, a studio apartment in Spanish Harlem when we were in the 11th grade. Ah. That's how bad it was. Yeah. He would come back with cuts all over him. <laughs> Disasters. And, uh, yeah. The zombies. Yeah, right. The zombie walk. What's the worst hell? Dust or crack? Are they both crack. the same? No, dust is... I mean, dust isn't calling you every day. It's not. I, crack is just uh, that bad. I would wake up every like every night. Go, All right, this is it. It's done. Right. Done. Wake up. You know, nine hours later, I'm gonna rob somebody for more. Crack. Just it's just. How it. long were you doing crimes and everything? Yeah. How long would a hit last? The crack. How long does the euphoria last? Seven minutes. Wow. And, and oh, then, that is like that is really like the first guys who figured out crack, like th- they were a genius slash beals above. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like they know seven minutes and they need another one. Yep. This is going to enslave cities, literally. Mm-hmm. And then it did, you know? I mean, yeah. crazy. It was amazing how you would go out and, like, uh, just go have, have a couple of beers. Have a couple of beers. Right. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a couple of beers. And, yeah. like, 14 seconds into a beer, you're like, what, why did we take our jackets exactly. off in this bar? This means nothing. Let's get out of here. Right, and, yeah, yeah. And then go smoke crack and stay in a bathroom for three days. Exactly. No, really. It's, it's a disaster. It you, that's why people always say, like, how, to, how does a homeless person sleep comfortably on an old bumper they found under a bridge in the Bronx? Because they're fine with it. Because they're on crack. Yeah, because they're fine. They, it's like the best bed ever. Absolutely. Because they're on crack. And you say that, like, you're like, you know, like, well, I'm not doing that. Right. As long as I'm not doing that, then you start doing that. Like, that's not that bad. Exactly. But you just, like, lower your standards every day. Like, right. Like, as long as I'm not doing this, I didn't rob you. I didn't rob people on the street. And then I started robbing people on the street. And I didn't go, you know what I mean? Just, it just kept getting worse Stuff and worse. Stuff you never thought you'd do. And listen, you know, uh, I, I was lucky in the sense I started making really good money compared to an average person when I was about 27 years old. Right. And that's when the blow started pretty heavy and like I was betting on games to try to win money to, to buy and then right. borrowing from a Shylock to buy and then but I always had enough money to, to go out and to cover you. Yeah, to cover me. Yeah. Which is not good. No. But at least I never had to go to the crimes because that's where you But like, you your life I gets mean, dark. You, you know? would have Absol- dude, absolutely. I'm not judging anybody. No, no, I'm saying like it just yeah. happened to work out a little bit. Like that's when I'm, yeah. you, de- you derailed your life. I never, I never even put on the tracks. Right. You derailed your. I just happen to be a little more talented than a lot of people. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm kidding. What I am is a lot more lucky. That's, that's what I am. You know. Uh, let's let's face the facts. But you know why I wanted to come on? Can I just tell you? I was watching the other day. Last week you had a comic on. I'm right. Not say who it was. 
And he was talking about just having fun. Just having fun. <laughs> I was, I, it was irking me. I couldn't take I it anymore. I couldn't take it anymore. Just, just out there having fun. And I'm like, fucking, you're not what? a criminal. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just, missing this. He was just, I, I'll tell you off the end. Yeah, and, and I was just like getting aggravated. And I don't even know the kid at yeah. all. I don't know the kid at all. Just, just well, like, his problem is he's a kid. I mean, he's probably a talented kid, but... It just it, seemed to me like a, and you, a frat it's like, boy. Yeah, to me and you, exactly. Oh. Me, and like, he, I'm going to get locked. I know I'm getting in trouble. You're like, not getting in trouble, bro. No. Like, uh. You want to get in trouble? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Trouble with a capital T that rhymes with B, which stands for bull. <laughs> he's getting in trouble like in The Sound of Music. Yeah. Like, he's, like, he's like in a gang, like in the West Side Story. You know what I mean? Like, uh, they I dance. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It's aggravating, but it's like you know, look, everybody's got everybody's got their pain, Everybody, yeah. and and as a comic, you got to draw from it. But there's some people you look at them and well, you he hear their have pain. Much. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You look at them and you go, I know you think you have pain, but your pain ain't gonna make me laugh. Right. Richard Pryor's pain made me laugh. Oh my god! Richard Pryor grew up in a whorehouse and watched his mother turn tricks. Yeah, and you know, and, uh, would shoot out the tires in his wife's caddy that he bought her, and that makes me laugh. I don't, I don't laugh at the frat prank where, you know, the worst I thing drove made. a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who stole it? Guess who stole those frat, the quads bus? <laughs> uh, so, uh, so now, I, how long have you been headlining? Raised us, I would say the past year. Good for you. I close a lot of, like, you know, local, you know, restaurant shows and stuff like that, but, like, just on the road, I'm just on the headline. Sobriety-wise... You know, basically what we do for a living, we work in nightclubs. Right. You know, it's a, how how difficult is that? Are there any coping mechanisms? Never to even use? dawns on me. I can hand people. I don't even think about it. I really don't. The people you see drunk at a comedy club in the audience are the worst commercials for drinking. Absolutely. They really are. Yeah. It, yeah. I can't. There's nobody promotes it better than a drunk <laughs> 22 year old. Like right. when I debate, like maybe I should drink. And then I look over and there's three dudes throwing up on each other. Right. There's a girl who can't find her heels. Right. Uh, <laughs> Right. I've told I told this story I'm a good. couple of times on the air where uh, you know uh, there was a, a bachelor bachelorette party a bunch of Puerto Rican girls and the, the bachelorette was uh, she about 195 pounds with a belly shirt a tattoo of her dead brother on her hip and uh, <laughs> she was telling her, have a drink it's my bachelorette party and I said I'm I'm sorry I'm I'm gay gay she goes you gay gay <laughs> and listen obviously a very witty funny girl yeah, yeah. but not a not a commercial for not a commercial for drink. <laughs> Uh, now, Mike, you don't drink either, right, buddy? It's been uh, it'll be seventeen years in March. That's really That's impressive. It. That's great. It's, it's yeah, but the bad. The thing only thing is... I've seen you drink since I've known you is your snot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, but still, uh, <laughs> once in a while, I'll get, I'll get the urge. You know, what I mean, you see people yeah, drink. How do you? What do you do? Just say forget about it. I know how, what a nightmare it would be for me again if I right. did. Yeah. I'll be I use my obesity. I go, I, I could get up and get a drink, but it's going to take 18 minutes to get out of bed. I'll be sleeping outside at 7-Eleven waiting for them to open. Right, yeah, right. 7-Eleven don't close. And then you night. realize 7-Eleven doesn't have yeah. oh, liquor. Yeah. And, oh, and no, they're no. open the whole time, so you could sweat so in. So you realize it's a horrible story. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now, are you on the road a lot? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like... For, you know, you do a lot of one nighters. You know, drive to exactly Pennsylvania, go to DC, and do like another weekend. And the two kids, like, who watches them? We live home. We had to move back home. Oh, okay. With well, my family. All right. Hey, There's it's, no way it's I would have been able to ha- do It's it. good to have that. You know? Yeah, I went full-time comedy in 2009. and We I should got, do some shows together. I been. I did, too. You're working with my buddy uh, at Starland Boardroom, Rich, uh, Oh, Chris. Chris, yeah. Chris is my friend. Chris, yeah. yeah the, by the way, I want to thank all the fans of the Artie Lang Show. Well, the Starland Ballroom, big theater in uh, the mid, mid- New Jersey, sold out. Sold out the show. And that's Saturday night. Standing so, room, right? That's a yeah. standing show, right? Well, no, I I sold it out five years ago standing, right. and they don't stop talking to each other. Yeah. The show yeah. went all right, but my buddies in the back told me you couldn't hear anything, so I was like, I'm not doing it unless you get seats. So they're putting seats in. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. but uh, sold it out, and um, yeah, plugging it on the show, so I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah Chris is a great guy. Yeah, he's a good kid. Yeah. yeah. The kids, concerts galore. The kids, I mean, because he works for Starland. Well, he's the guy who first got me to meet Springsteen. Oh, really? I, there's a light of day charity that Bruce is involved with at Starland Ballroom, and I had just done stand up there. I sold it out. I made them some money, so they said, "Come down." And Springsteen's going to be here, but he's guarded kind of heavily. And Chris was doing security there, so Chris says to me, "Hey, I'm a comic. If you let me open for you, I can get you to meet Bruce tonight." I go, "Deal, <laughs> deal." Sign on scene, yeah. and he kept his word. Here's the conversation I had with Springsteen. He goes, uh, uh, Bruce, a uh, fan of yours, Artie Lang. goes, hey, man, how you doing? I said, your music uh, you know, means a lot to me. He goes, thanks a lot, man. And he walked away. So, 
And then, of course, Chris is in my life in five years. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But that guy, he's a good a, comic. I don't know about that trade-off <laughs> yeah. right there. <laughs> but Chris is a good comic, yeah, thank yeah. God. So, yeah, yeah, I'm working with him there. He got me tickets to see, uh, it's kind of not going to sound really good, but Taylor Swift with my daughter, like, right, like, right there. But it's big for her. Oh, my God. You should have was... grabbed the mic out of her hand. <laughs> <laughs> so big for her. Like, my daughter was, I was God for that. That like, much, yeah, forget her, right? Ah, forget about it. Until I started singing in a concert, and she was trying to film. <laughs> and you could hear me singing behind her. She's like, she puts the camera, like, serious? Right now, you're going to sing? It'd be funny if you smell, if you, fell off the, you fell off the crack wagon on a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> That's not the coolest story. You're back in, you're back in uh, rehab, in group therapy, guys. Typical story. We, we've all been there, Taylor Swift. <laughs> she goes into that one song about breaking up with that guy. Uh, all right, well, uh, we've got to take a break. We'll come back with more of uh, Mike Gaffney again. You're going to be at uh, the Borgata. The Borgata, Monday through Sunday. Monday through Sunday, so definitely go check him out. And back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.